Hello again, and how are we all? Hope you're all doing well. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing in this video is yet another unboxing, because earlier today, I finally got my hands on this. The PlayStation Vita Slim. Right, where... Actually, will I need my knife for this? Yeah, there's a sticker. Try and bear with me, folks. Yeah, look at uh, try not to laugh at me. Um, you're probably thinking, why have you got a Vita when you've already got one? This one, the original. Um, the reason I went ahead and got the Vita Slim is basically, well, the other one's broken. I did look around to see if I could get it refurbished or anything. Well, originally I got that Vita off of eBay, and I can hear a lot of people going, Oh, you idiot. And you're quite right to say that, to be honest. Um, I was looking for a Vita to replace my um, PSP, which got smashed. Not my fault. It happened while I was not around. I just kind of left it in my room, and someone basically smashed the screen, so I could not use it anymore. So I went looking for a PlayStation Vita in order to replace that, and I saw this beast on eBay going for about £70. Um, before I went ahead and made the purchase, I went on the seller's page, and he had 100% positive feedback, which is usually a good thing. Now, the majority of my consoles have been pre-owned, and... They never usually break, which is surprising. Um, with the exception of my PS2 and PS3, the majority of my consoles are pre-owned. For example, um, my Nintendo 3DS. This was pre-owned, and the only thing that's kind of gone wrong with it is... Um, you know that little rubber thing they put on the analog stick? Only that's come off. Nothing is, n nothing is absolutely wrong with it. The touch screens work perfectly, the battery still holds a decent charge, and... Well, originally I wanted to have the um, white one, because usually I get just the black consoles, and I figured it'd be a nice change, but I got turquoise blue, which was my next choice, so all in all, not bad. Right, back to the unboxing. Okay, so, got the knife, open that up. And somehow it sealed itself again. For God's sake. Okay, there we go. I gotta say, really securely packaged. Now, I ordered this directly from Games website. Stay that there for now. Okay, so here it is. As soon as you open the thing, and yet another box awaits. Now, how the devil do you open this? Oh, there it is. Okay, so pop that open. Pwah. Okay, now that we're open, shift that so you can see a little better. This is quality filmmaking right here. That's it. Give me gone, you filthy creature. There we go. Okay, when we first open it up, we get the welcome PlayStation World. Which is basically how to do the initial setup, charging procedures, safety guide, all that stuff. Um, no idea what this is. Um, let's have a quick look. Um, if I have to guess, I'd say these the augmented reality cards or something. Well, there's six of them, so I'm not exactly sure. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. I think I've got hay fever because I've been like this for the past week. 
AR play. Oh, the oh, they are the AR cards. Indispensable. Blah blah blah. Moving on. And the safety guide to the PlayStation Vita. Same old stuff. Don't play past a certain time, or you could mess up your eyes or something. I don't know. And um, what have we got here? Um, the guarantee from Sony. The charger. Actually, that's quite a sexy little charger. I can't believe I just called the electric appliance sexy. This is what happens when you don't plan out a review. You splurt random crap. Uh, the fuck. No, that's not a 5-pin USB. That's more of a... Um, I'd have to say that's more of a 2-pin USB. Because the 5-pin's bigger and larger. And that was the one for the original PSP. So there's your cable there. The um, plug, obviously. Let's take that out of the way. And the creme de la creme. To get that off... And that's everything in there. So here it is, the PlayStation Vita Slim. Whoa. Now this is nice. It's definitely slimmer than the original. Okay, now that we've unboxed, let's get this back up here so you can see me. Okay, so how does this compare straight out cosmetically with the original? Well, as you can tell... It's about 20% thinner than the original. Um, it's more curved, which is to make it easier to hold. Of course, you've still got your sensor pads and everything. Motion. Well, motion gaming. The start and select buttons are much larger this time round. And um, that's pretty much it. In terms of cosmetics, you know, a few buttons have been changed in terms of size. The screen is still the same size and resolution. The only difference is this is an LCD instead of the OLD that this one has, which basically means this one has better vibrancy in the colors, but this one with its LED screen basically means you get two extra hours worth out of the battery's power. Which is always a plus. Always a plus. Okay, so going back to my story about the original Vita, like I said, I bought this off of eBay, which, again, stupid mistake. But the majority of consoles I've bought pre-owned have never broke on me, with the exception of a GameCube I bought, and my cousin broke that ah, when I said he could go on it. Stupid mistake again. Um, like I said, the seller on eBay had a 100% rating, positive, and they had all positive comments. And I usually check those before I make any kind of purchase. Because once or twice I have had some bad experiences. For example, once on Amazon, believe it or not. I ordered a book for about two pounds, and that book and that seller took the two pounds, and I never got my book. I did file a complaint, and I got a refund from Amazon, so it wasn't so bad, but it was over two pounds, you know. Okay, now to be fair to the guy who sold me my original Vita, he did package a lot of bubble wrap in the box, but um, I was a bit iffy when I heard which carrier he'd gone with which delivery service and I still have one of the packages right here if you can see that that he chose to go with my Hermes now I have never heard of this delivery company until this purchase basically my Hermes is a delivery service and they boast they're the best in the world you know just about every company tends to do that these days but my Hermes has a really, really bad reputation. Um, basically, some of their business practices include, you know, packages that have fragile on them. They're basically kicked until they're nothing. Well, 
the integrity of the item is fairly compromised. For example, if you, like I said, you send something and you mark it fragile, be very careful. I don't know, some people have said that they've had, like, vases and stuff they send through my Hermes. And basically, they were just shattered in pieces. There was one girl on eBay, or not eBay, on YouTube, whose video I watched, and basically, she ordered a game from eBay, and again, this was marked fragile, and she just got the box, and the box looked like it had been played football with. The item was completely intact, thanks to the bubble, heavy degree in bubble wrap, which was fantastic, but no delivery company should ever, ever do that. Now, when I first got the package and I opened it up, you know, the box was in one piece, and I thought, oh god, thank god, because I had been panicking since I heard all the bad reviews. I opened it up and it came to this, and I thought, oh Jesus, they've swapped it on me. That's another business practice my Hermes have been guilty of. Items being stolen and some being replaced with a similar weight. A similar weighted item. For example, someone had um, bought themselves a brand new laptop. I think it was a MacBook. And basically it got replaced with one of the earlier models. Which was broken. It was just like the chassis. None of the components inside. It was just like an empty shell. And this guy had paid a decent couple thousand for it. Okay, move that out of the way. Now, the original idea behind the PlayStation, v the PS Vita, was to kind of reinvigorate the handheld gaming market, which has been declining for... A, well, it was declining for a while, but now it's back with a vengeance. Because, you know, we've got the... Nintendo 3DS and its bigger brother, the Excel, but the, the 3DS is now not its only competition because now it has to compete with iOS devices like iPhones and Android devices as well, so it's got that competition. So for all its faults, it's a nice little console and everything, but like I said, I do have complaints. For one thing, it's price, which is ridiculous. Um, now, a brand new original Vita and um, a PlayStation Vita Slim goes for about £180 here in the UK. I don't know what that would be in um, the US, about 300 or something. Um, if it's on its own or in a bundle package, I have no idea. Um, while you can get a 3DS for much cheaper than that, you could pick one up for about 100 brand new, if you know the right place to go. For example, I got mine for 110 and that came with the starter pack and a couple of games, which was a great offer, honestly. Uh, I got that from Game, which was a bundle. Um... Right, I've already explained the price, which the Vita is much more expensive than its rivals, which kind of defeats the object, in a way, because in the handheld market, it's dominated by, you know, this little guy, the Excel, and phones and other devices like it. The Vita doesn't really have much to stand on. I mean, yes, it has the best resolution of most graph of most mobile gaming systems, but the main problem is, like I said, the cost, because it's basically killing its own market in that respect. Um, what else is contributing to it but not doing as well as it could be is the limited library of games. Um, basically, um, I don't know how many are on cart with um, the Vita. I think it's about, what is it, 45? Not a very big library. And that's not including games that can be downloaded onto the Vita through the PlayStation Store. Which it itself is a plus, but compared to the 3DS, it's very minimal. And here's another rant, well, kind of nitpick about the PlayStation Vita. The memory cards. 
and let's see if I can get that in. These little cards. This is a 16 gigabyte card. Now, what I don't understand is, well, going back to the play PSP for a moment, they used like micro S, they used SD cards essentially, and they were very affordable. You know, outside, you know, you could get a third party card, you stick it in the PSP, and it works fine after you format it. That's absolutely fine. But um, with the Vita, Sony have taken a very different approach with it. They basically say, you know, get these cards or do without, basically, which is really annoying. And that was one of the problems with the original Vita, because it had no internal memory and you had to get the card with the console. Otherwise, you've just bought a console, you bought games, but you can't save your progress, which kind of defeats the object of a game. You know, you play a game, you save, you continue from where you are. That's the thing. But with the newest one, the Vita Slim, thank God they've rectified that and have built in one gigabyte of memory, and that's without the card, which is always a plus, I grant you. But it would have been helpful if that were the case with the original. So ultimately, what do I think of the PlayStation Vita? Overall, I think the PlayStation Vita is a nice little console, but like I said earlier on, I wish it had a bigger library of games. I mean, lately we've got Borderlands 2 for it, the re-release of Final Fantasy X and X-2 in HD, which is always nice, but I wish there was something a little more exclusive, like one game that pretty much sells the console, shows you what it can do. I mean... Look at Titanfall. How many people got themselves... Uh, what is it on Xbox One? How many people bought an Xbox One because of Titanfall? Freaking tons. So that's... Oh, I just realised something as well. There's a cosmetic change I forgot to look at. Um, remember this? The mystery accessory slot. For the original Vita. Now, um, it's unknown what this was even going to be for. Um, oddly enough, Sony have done nothing with it. Now, with the original PSP, it did have a slot on top, which was the USB port, but it added a lot of more, it had more fu more functionality. For example, you could slot the um, Go camera on it, the GPS tracker a microphone for the app that could translate into multiple different languages but they seem to have basically ignored that function on the Vita and in the new one as you can see the only slot on top up and um, let's get that closer so you can possibly see basically there's just the one slot for games so they've decided in their infinite wisdom to abandon the extra accessory slot Right, Let, let's do a real comparison this time. Like I said before, PlayStation Vita compared to PlayStation Vita Slim. The Vita, 20% thinner, has longer battery life, has a backlight, it has an LCD screen, it's the OL, OLD screen, so less vibrancy in the colours, same resolution, um, lack of an accessory slot, um, pros of the new Vita. The start and select buttons are much bigger now, so they don't get stuck or anything like this one tends to. Um, also, with the inclusion of the micro USB, the cable is smaller, takes up less room, unlike the one that charged up the original Vita. Also, the Vita Slim is easier to hold, it's nicer to hold, with the rounded corners, it fits not very nicely in my hand, it still has the um, sensor, you know, motion, pads, with it being more rounded, it doesn't dig into your hands as much as, let's say, this one did. I mean, I could probably stand about up to an hour and then my hands would start to feel a bit Ugh, when holding this, but after having a go on this, 
I can honestly say I could play this for hours and my hands wouldn't be aching or anything. So that's a plus for the Vita. So ultimately, I would if I gave you a, if you were given a choice between the Vita and the Vita Slim, I would say Vita Slim. You know, more power, internal memory. It has all the pluses going for it. The only downside is the um, screen type. Now, there is one improvement I can... Well, actually, there's two improvements I can think of that would make the Vita much better. Well, actually, scratch that three. Um, bring down the price a little bit more, and then you'll be on par. You know, you're in the right competitive field with the 3DS. Your main rivals, by the way. Um... Let's see, what else? Um, get more games. A, a game is only as good as its library. If its library is subpar, then the console's going to flop. That's why the Virtual Boy really sucked. I say that, but the console wasn't much better, but the library of games pretty much contributed to that. Um, let's see, one last thing. Oh, yes. Now, this has been argued by a lot of people online, and it's the fact that PlayStation Vita can only support one PlayStation account at a time. Now, personally, this annoyed me, because as it is with the PlayStation Store, you know, some games are available only in certain territories. For example, let's say Dino Crisis 2, a classic of the PlayStation 1. I have never found it on the UK PlayStation Store, but yet it's on the American one. Yet I have two PlayStation accounts. One's American and one's UK. UK is my main one. America is my secondary one. Um, kind of a pain to set up an account in America and basically buy it. Now, I have it on my PlayStation 3. You know, I bought the game, I downloaded it. I've been playing it on my PS3. It's great it has that compatibility, but it would be nice if the Vita shared that. Like, you could have multiple accounts at the same time. Like, you could have one deactivated while you have one activate, active, which is your main one. Or better yet, get Dino Crisis on the UK one, honestly. Um, I think that's about it, really. Um, oh yeah, so quick rundown. Cut the price down a little more. Let's have a bigger library of games. And have the ability to support more than one PSN account. For those of you who are interested how I got the um, American account to work on my PS3, well, this is basically it. You get your main one, which all, has all your trophies and stuff. You go to new user, you set up your territory and everything, you know, email and all that stuff. Um... And, you know, it should be fully upgraded at that point. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how do you put money on another account? It's very simple. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it through PayPal, which I wouldn't recommend because I tried it and it didn't work for some stupid reason. Um, the best way I can really say how to do it is to go through a website called PC Game Supply. Basically, you pay for a voucher, and they have top-up cards for all different territories. The American one's great, because here in the UK, I could pay £6, and that will give me $10 to redeem on the store. You know, you buy it online, the code is emailed to you in seconds, you log on to your PS3, put in the code, and... There you go, you, have, you have now have 10 bucks to legally purchase anything on the PlayStation Store, as long as it's within the $10 range, obviously. Just keep in mind, if you buy any full games from the other account, the DLC will only work from that account. You can't have something like, um, let's say, No More Heroes, and then use a, the U the UK DLC, because they will not work. The DLC have to be from the same country as the game. Or in some cases, you know, I buy the game here, it has to be from the store for your respective territory. Anyway, enough rambling. You know, I've given you a little tips on how to do this, that, and the other. 
Right, um, just wrap this up quick because this has come up to about 20 minutes and I don't want it to go any longer. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully next time I'll finally be doing my review on the final book in the Meg series, Hell's Aquarium. So until then, take care. Leave a like and subscribe if you like the video and all my other amazing content. I use that term lately. Okay, thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye!